Uh, Father, I'd like to go back to uh, uh, the Waymire events and as you experienced uh, them and um, direct your attention back uh, to 2004. Um, um, do you recall receiving a letter um, uh, from uh, Patrick Menke, M-E-N-K-E? Do you recall that? Do you know, I believe Pat Menke was how I got to those two young men okay. who from the Barnes and Nobles. I believe that's how I got to them. Okay. Or they got to me or whatever. Okay. Why don't you um, um, I'm going to give you uh, an exhibit um, to look at in a moment about that letter, but before I do, um, I'll just give it to you. What number is it? This is exhibit 111. It's a letter uh, to you. Okay. Before we go through this, uh, Father, I had recalled that you were saying that before you got the actual report of the molestation um, um, and the events that, that followed that, you really were thinking that Waymeyer was more attracted to adults and homosexual activity, right? That's right. Okay. Let's look at uh, October 8th, uh, 2004, the letter addressed to you from Pat Amenke. And um, it begins by saying, Dear Father Kevin, I am writing to you with regards to our conversation a few weeks ago related to Father Curtis Waymeyer. Um, since visiting with you, I've been troubled with what was communicated and thought it would be appropriate for me to write. And then at the third paragraph, um, is Pat Men Patrick, this is a man, isn't it? Yes. Okay. At the third paragraph, he writes, uh, to you, the plan or approach that you communicated to us with regards to Father Curtis, including the following. Point one, full disclosure with key leadership staff at St. Joseph's. Did you do full disclosure? Well, I'm looking down here, he says, I did talk with the principal DRE and youth minister. Okay. So that's... But talking with is different than full disclosure. So my question to you is full, what disclosure was actually made about what you knew about Curtis Waymeyer to uh, leadership staff at St. Joseph's? Do you know I have no recollection, no independent recollection of that. Uh, at the second uh, page of the letter uh, from Patrick, um, he states at the third to the last paragraph, I'm troubled that no indication has been given with regards to any group therapy. Had a promise been made that there would be group therapy pertaining to Waymire? I don't recall that. He goes on to state, I'm troubled by the fact that no restrictions have been imposed upon Father mm. Curtis in his ministry. Um, he goes and then states, I'm troubled by the fact that my son went to Valley Fair this summer with St. Joseph's and Father Curtis was one of the chaperones. I'm troubled when my two teenage sons came home from a mass on Sunday at St. Joseph's and speak of betrayal and hypocrisy. Is it a correct in reading this letter that you received that she's talking or he's talking about concerns about Waymire and youth, not adults? And you know it. Uh, say, first of all, Patrick Minky was then, and at least until recently, was a friend of mine, worshipped at St. Peter Claver from time to time with his kids. We consulted regularly on things. Patrick shared with a lot of people in the Catholic Church concerns about homosexuality. Yeah, but let's, let's yes. address this so, letter. So, what is written in yes. this letter? This mm -hmm. letter says teenage kids, right. right? 
Right. And I think, let me tell you what my understanding was then, and I've had a chance to refresh this because at some point, maybe in the NPR interview, I saw a letter that Mankey then wrote to Archbishop Neinstead in the last year or two. And uh, my understanding that Patrick did not like the idea of there being gay men in the priesthood. Yeah, but let's get let's get back to your knowledge. Right. Uh, at this time in 2004, because your assertion is that it just had to do with homosexuality and adult right. males, and that's what he represented to us under oath before. We're now looking at this letter where it is written to you on October uh, 8th of 2004, and it's exp being expressed in vivid terms. I'm concerned and troubled by the fact that he's having contact with my kids who are teenagers, minors, correct? Right. Okay. So, um, you do know that he's around kids and there's ex ex concerns being expressed to you in writing about that, correct? That's correct. Okay, good. And then he goes on to say, as difficult as it is to say, I cannot help but get a sense that this is just going to quote, quietly go away, unquote. And that's what happened, isn't it? No. Let's go back to his letter. Okay. He, his son, okay, he well, says, I'm concerned I, that the my- question, Father, yes. and I'm gonna move on. Well, if I just it, point to the letter says, they speak of betrayal and hypocrisy. The very, co very typical of the kind of uh, uh, culture wars in the Catholic Church about homosexuality which our Archbishop, of course, has taken a strong position as well. And that's what this, I read this about. This I has nothing to do with adults. This has to do with yeah. his kids and Waymeyer being with him um, as a priest, as a chaperone, and he's telling you about yeah. the kids, right? Not about I, the adults. I, don't, I do not agree with your conclusion from this text. Okay. Yeah. But you don't dispute that this was written to you and received by you. Correct. Okay. Then um, you did make reference which, to the fact. Would you guys like these back? Yeah, you can just. Or can I keep that? You or do you want to? Give okay, it to there me. you go. Oh, he's okay. good. There you go. You did reference that uh, later on you understood that a letter had been written to, uh, to Archbishop Neinstadt reflecting upon um, this situation. And you had to, you just made reference to that, right? That's correct. What do you understand about what was written to Neinstadt and the reasons for that? I believe we're you referring to a letter from Patrick Menke. Yes. Okay. Then I believe that was shown to me by the MPR reporter. Okay. In the well, midst, of, so I think I don't think I even had the chance that you have graciously given me to read fully okay. the document placed in front of me. Well, I'm not going to have a chance to read the whole thing or have you read it, but I'm going to I'm going to try to direct your attention to a few things. First, exhibit 113, I think you have before you, which would be the letter to um, uh, Archbishop Neinstadt, dated June 26, 2012. And he states, Dear uh, Archbishop Neinstadt, I am unfortunately writing to you with regard to the recent news of Father Curtis Waymeyer. Now, we know now that Waymire has been arrested, right? I, I presume I am not reading the or letter. public. Can okay. I, I, so I'm just contextualizing that for you. At the fifth paragraph down, he writes, I expressed to Father McDonough that even though the two young men approached by Father Waymire were 19-year-old adults, they easily could have passed off as high school students. The very age group of my sons, these were very young looking men. Father McDonough tried to ease my concerns by suggesting the many studies that disassociate homosexuals and the abuse of minors. Is it correct when this writer uh, 
the <coughs> reports to Archbishop Neinstedt that you had tried to dissuade Mikey from b being concerned about Waymeyer and teenagers and direct the concern to only adults? Of course, this is from 2012, and now Patrick's reporting here what, what was in his you? mind at that time and what I said to him. My, my understanding from the beginning, and as you can see from the rest of the uh, rest of the record, is that this was a fellow who was having adult same-sex attractions and difficulty reconciling them with his religious faith. Do and you dispute that Mikey told you otherwise, that this was concerns pertaining to teenagers and um, these other adult I, males, males could well have been her son's age? Of his I, son's age? I do not recall his ever saying, and the record may reflect differently, but I don't recall his ever saying that he was worried that these were, these could have been kids. I don't remember his ever saying that. Okay. But you don't dispute that that's what's being written here, do you? No question, okay. that's what is being written here. Okay, goes on to state, Father McDonough informed me that Father Waymeyer was sent away for a week evaluation. Does that sound correct? sounds correct. And then it states, officials within the local church were notified and other efforts were being made to address the situation, period. He states, quote, I specifically asked about any possible restrictions that might be imposed on his ministry, period. I orchestrated a personal meeting between Father McDonough and one of the young men to hear the story firsthand. Do you recall that? I don't recall that, but this, it seems likely it happened. The next page, uh, first paragraph, he writes, as the next months unfolded, I grew increasingly concerned that life was, quote, back to normal, unquote, at the Church of St. Joseph. My wife and I were both shocked to hear of his continued involvement with the youth group i.e. chaperoning trips. Um, do you dispute that you were told that Waymeyer had been chaperoning, had been um, uh, the subject of these concerns raised uh, earlier by, by Mr. Mankey and his family? Let me say again that my understanding was that Patrick, my friend, was concerned that a man he thought was a homosexual was involved in ministry at all and that that might cause his children someday if they discovered that he was a gay man to feel that we were undermining the teaching of the Catholic Church about homosexuality. That was the extent of it. I never believed that, uh, that uh, Curtis Waymeyer constituted a danger to kids. I'm sorry I didn't believe that. I wish I'd have believed it. I wish I could have acted on that. I did not believe it. Well, you chose to believe that and protect Waymire, um, and you now realize that it was at the peril of these kids, don't you? I, yeah, I, I chose to believe what the predominance of the information I had pointed to. Well, you don't dispute that, the, that these concerns address teenage boys, do you? And his concern that they would feel betrayal. And a chaperoning them traveling with them, being with them, and not on restriction. Correct? And his concern that they'd feel betrayed when they found out that there was a gay man involved in their life. <coughs> and that's the, the choice you made to interpret that way at that time. That's a fair sum. Okay. And remained my conviction until I learned differently. Sadly, terribly tragically. When you saw this in 2004, did you ever go back at that time and say, wait a minute, I'm thinking homosexual adults. This person is telling me, somebody I know and trust, there's teenage kids involved. I better go back and look at this file. I better get to the bottom of this and do some investigation. Did you do anything responsive to this to investigate what was in that file and of record uh, before 2004 going back to seminary? So let's, let me just go to the underlying principle. My understanding that Pat Menke 
what Pat Minky, my friend, was communicating to me was he did not want a gay man in the priesthood. So rather than, Pat was expressing concern about the safety of his kids. He was expressing concern about the potential delusionment of his kids, disillusioning of his kids. But in the answer to your second half of the question, I want to separate the, the fact description at the beginning. I did not think that Patrick was alerting me to concerns about this man hurting kids in any way. That being said, no, I did not go back to my knowledge thereafter. The materials had all been sent, to my knowledge, to the people doing the assessment. Uh, but it was your job to keep the kids safe, wasn't it? You bet. And do you agree that you blew it? Anytime a kid is hurt, my heart's broken. Could I have acted differently based on the information I had? I don't think I had a right to do so. It angers me that I can't see more clearly. It angers me that I can't go back in, in a time machine and change it, Mr. Anderson, but I can't. Well, you know. I don't, I don't believe I blew it, no. Okay. But you made the choice not to go back and look at the file, response to this information. Sure. And you now know in that file there's information that goes back to seminary that raises the red flags, don't you? Do you know, actually, so I've, I've let that pass a couple of times. I don't recall that I looked at his file, so I don't know any, any more about that. What is in the file, I don't recall either. Uh, it may be that there's a file at the seminary that suggests that this is a man with some homosexuality issues. I don't know that. So how many times before 2004 had you dealt with a priest who uh, the initial concerns with were with um, adults um, and sexual misconduct that turned out to have been actually adults and children and sexual misconduct? My initial reaction is I don't recall a similar situation. Okay. I may, my memory may be refreshed, but I don't recall that. Certainly the adults that you knew about here were close enough to the age of minority that it, it would merit some inquiry, wouldn't it? 19 years old. Yeah. 19 or 20. Yeah. And as a, I think the letter shows I met with at least one of them. It did not appear to be a child to me. Okay. So um, you do not agree with the uh, June 26, 2012 observation that um, uh, you and the archdiocese were sweeping this under the rug? I have the advantage of seeing the letter, and I think I wrote to him that I accept your perception that we might be trying to sweep all this under the rug. Nonetheless, your perception is inaccurate. And I addressed that with Patrick in 2004. You may have said it to him, but did you do any other, take any other action responsive to this information, this concern, other than what you've told us? In other words, giving him assurances or disagreeing with him or believing what you believe. Did you take any affirmative action to really perceive what the danger was and known to the archdiocese at that time beyond what you've told us? sent him for assessment, saw that he was you participating in treatment, and submitted him to a monitoring program. And lifted the restrictions on a contact with youth. That may be so I don't recall that. I'd like to ask you some questions about uh, uh, Father Shelley. And in mm -hmm. Uh, seminary, um, there are some indications that um, while he was in seminary in 1995, it, he had been reported for wrestling with um, boys in a swimming pool and not maintaining proper, proper boundaries. 
Uh, did you, that ever come to your attention? And, and if so, when? I don't believe it did. I have no memory of it. And then, um, uh, in 1995, um, uh, he was, according to the records, I think, ordained a priest to the archdiocese. You were a general. I'll accept that if, okay. if the records show it. Um, and you received from uh, uh, Joe Turnus, T-E-R-N-U-S, did you not, um, some information about Shelley? I don't recall this. Okay. Do you recall receiving uh, oh, a, a report sorry, about Sorry, I was in 1995. The, yes. Okay, 1995. so now we're not in 95. Yeah, we're talking about Shelley now. Okay. And we're in 1995. In, okay. Okay, excuse me. Um, so in 2004, excuse me, I misspoke. There we go. He was ordained in 95, but now we're in 2004. Right. You received a report from Joe Turnus. Okay. There were, let me just, so that you understand my confusion, there is a priest in another diocese named Turnus, and I was thinking, 1995, did I hear from Father Turnus? Yeah. No. Yeah, this would be a guy that was a parishioner or somebody that uh, knew Shelley uh, from his uh, parish in Mount Okay. Okay. So let me back this up. So we haven't been ordained in uh, 90, uh, 95. And then in 2004, tell us what you learned about Shelley uh, and possible possession of child porn. And uh, would you first agree that the use or possession of a child porn is a form of child abuse? Certainly the, the production of it is a form of child abuse. And then any sort of possession is clearly a crime. Yeah. And subject to mandatory reporting. Of course. Okay. Okay. So um, tell us what you learned from Joe Turnus in 2004. Okay. So let me address the specific question you raised about any suspicion of, of child pornography, nothing. Joe Turnus never mentioned child pornography to me. I'll let you follow up, but I'll just say, you no did, one. You did learn that he, uh, that Shelley had a computer? I did. And you got it from Turnus, correct? What I received exactly, I'm not sure, a computer. I think I received the whole computer, I don't know that. What'd you do with the computer? Uh, I, at some early point, entrusted it to our chancellor, uh, Bill Fallon at the time, and I confronted Shelley about the report from Joe Turnus, which I had no reason to disbelieve, that there was indications on the computer that someone using the computer had accessed pornography. It was child pornography, wasn't it? No. It was never described as child pornography? Never described, only by Jennifer. Uh, uh, Hasselberger in 2012. Okay. No one else ever described it as child pornography. So before you turned it over to Fallon, did you look at it? No. Did Fallon ever tell you that he had? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think either of us was capable at the time. You're aware that uh, a, a private investigative firm was then hired to determine Before we get to that, uh, you said you confronted Shelley about it. Uh, right. What did you confront Shelley with, and what did he say? I confronted him with the reported existence of pornography on the computer and said, are you downloading pornography? And he said, no, or if any, very little. And it turns out that his denial was a lie. That's, what, that's why we involved the investigator, okay. because I didn't particularly believe it. And so the investigator was, uh, Richard, did you ask him for his other computers? I did not. Were you aware that he had others? I don't think I was. Um, and the uh, investigative firm that was hired was <coughs> Richard Setter and Associates. They were a firm that had been hired and retained by the Archdiocese before in, in matters such as child and sexual abuse, correct? I can't say that we had ever retained Saturn Associates in regard to child sexual abuse. We may have. I have no specific okay. question. We, we brought them in on various clergy discipline matters. Okay. And in any case, you're aware that it was sent to Setter for his review? 
and you're aware that Center had a forensic uh, uh, assessment done by a computer expert. I, yes. And you're aware they prepared a report. Yes. And uh, when Turnus turned this over to and expressed the concerns that he did, it's also correct that you gave Turnus, quote, all matter of assertions that this will be taken care of and that Shelley will get counseling, unquote, didn't you? I don't recall that, but that would have been typical of what I would have done, yes. And it's also true that Turnus, at the time he turned it over to you, having looked at it himself, um, uh, told you that he, quote, didn't want it swept under the rug uh, like these other priests that have been moved around, didn't he? I don't recall that. Well, and also, if you're quoting from something, you could show the witness that would be fair. I'm quoting from Minnesota Public Radio that interviewed him, that he said that too. Oh. But there's no, con story? there's no, con I did not, there's no contempor contemporary record of his having said so. No, he said he said that, okay. um, and um, that was reported and, uh, and, to NPR. And he and said that he said that several years later. He said that he said that to you when a computer right. was uh, turned but, he, but his, his report about my having said whatever I reported to have said is not contemporaneous with the actual meeting. Is that there, correct? Uh, he says, well, we, it, well, We'll see what the he, record he says. says he that. says what he says. Yeah, uh, let, but, let's leave it at yeah. that. Uh, the Archdiocese does start an investigation, and in it, um, there's some indication that Shelley is asked to turn over two other personal computers. Do you have any knowledge of that? I believe that's after the time I left the Archdiocese. It's 2004. Oh, okay. Um, there's. Do you know? Um, there's some indication of uh, Shelley having destroyed one computer, and um, uh, do, you, do you know anything about that? I don't believe I do, no. There's some indication that Shelley turned one computer over to his lawyer, Paul Eng. Do you know anything about that? I must have known something at the time. I have no recollection of it now. There's indication that he referred, uh, refused to give them to the archdiocese, however. Um, do you remember anything like that? I do not. Are you conflating what happened in 2004 with what happened after I left the administration? Well, it's, it's referring back to the events of 2004. Mm -hmm. Is this again a report from media, NPR, or is this a document that you can show the, the father to refer to? This is Exhibit 38, but I'm not going to use that now. I'm just asking what you remember, Father, and if you remember that, tell me. If you don't, tell me. Yeah. I can okay. tell you I not only don't remember it, it doesn't sound familiar. Um, do you, um, the report that you got from Setter and uh, the forensic report done by a guy by the name of Johnson, you read that report, didn't you? I must have. I don't remember specifically reading it, but I, I either read it or I got a verbal summary of it from Bill Fallon, one or the other. The report, Permit me to mention that Bill Fallon was the link, the connection to Richard Setter. And hence, I turned over the whatever I'd received to Bill and said, "We need to figure out if this. We need to get evidence if my belief that this guy is lying to us about this porno is true or not." And so, get to work with Setter. The Setter report, uh, the Archdiocese refused to turn over to the police, and thus we haven't seen that. But there is accounts that say the Setter report comes back and that there are over 2,000 pornographic images. Do you remember hearing that? And reading that? I don't remember. I remember Jennifer telling me there were 1,200 pornographic images. Okay. There's also a account that says that, quote, many could be borderline illegal. That I, I'd be very surprised if any responsible account says that. Um, uh, the report um, reflects that um, there were search terms on the computer that said, quote, free naked boy pictures. Do you recall receiving that information? I don't. Um, it also reflects uh, records that the report indicated and lists search terms, quote, hardcore teen boys, unquote, European teen boys, 
helpless teen boys, unquote. Do you recall receiving that information I do included not. in that report? Sir, I do not. Does that concern you? Yes. Such the terms would be? Yes. Um, the Setter uh, report also indicates that uh, they found that uh, through their forensic work that it was Shelley that had exclusive use of that computer. Did you learn that? I'm not sure that it was exclusive use, but predominant use, yes, which was responsive to my particular question. So um, if doesn't hearing those terms alone and knowing that he had exclusive or primary use of this computer in itself, in your view, trigger a mandated report at that point in time? No. Why not? Because the FBI-related expert, whom Richard Setter himself, a retired police chief, uh, hired in our name to report, said there is no child pornography on the computer. First, he's not a mandated reporter, right? He's hired by the Archdiocese as a private investigator, correct? I believe that's correct, yes. You're a mandated reporter, correct? Correct. And the other Archdiocese officials involved at this point are mandated reporters, correct? Correct. Okay. So, um, if you had received the information that these search terms were on there, as I've described, and it was described as having, could it be borderline illegal, is it your view that would trigger a mandated report? Not if two law enforcement related people had told us that there is no child pornography. But isn't that for the police to decide? Isn't that why we have the police and not you and others like you doing internal investigations such as this and hiring people to tell you certain things? Isn't that the police's job to decide if there's a crime? Uh, a former chief of police and an FBI-related uh, investigator, it's hard to imagine more reliable preliminary sc screening about whether there's anything here. No one raised the issue of child pornography with us. Why do you think the Archdiocese is refusing then to turn over the set of report to the, to the police? I have no idea. What did you do with the computer? What happened to it? I gave it to Bill Fallon. And you don't know what happened to it? That's correct. Did you hear from any, anybody what did happen to it and where it went and what was done with it? Uh, when? After it was turned over to Bill Fallon. When? When I was called in by Archbishop Neinstead in the fall of 2012, I learned that uh, the computer disks information had been properly stored. Sometime thereafter, I think in perhaps in a media report, I'm not certain where, I learned that there's a question about a hard drive. And it's and its uh, proper uh, uh, archiving. Now the disks are different than the computer that you originally got, right? <coughs> you know, I you got the computer, not that contained the disk. I don't know that. Okay. Um, I mean, it could could well be. I'm not disputing it. I just don't recall. It is true that um, Shelley was sent to, sent to St. Luke's. Uh, uh, and you sent a letter to them? I don't recall that, but I'm sure the record would demonstrate it. And in the letter, um, there is a specific questions that you address. And it is my read of it that you only want to know uh, two limited things and not the whole picture. Uh, and the two questions you put in the report to St. Luke's are number one, whether Shelley had a problem with compulsive 
uh, interest in pornography use, and number two, uh, whether he's being honest. And my question to you is, do you recall having directed those two questions to them? I don't. Do you have the document? Could we s look I, at it together? I, I do, but if it, if it does say that, um, do you recall why you would limit their inquiry into Shelley um, um, and not try to get to the bottom of the real danger posed um, and have them do a complete assessment as opposed to answer two questions given? I, I object to the form, uh, assuming facts not in evidence, and it's also difficult without the witness to see the report in context and its entirety to answer the question. If you can answer without guessing or speculating, Father. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure how I can do this without speculating. Well, let me ask you if you recall limiting your, uh, limiting the inquiry that you wanted St. Luke's to make concerning Shelley. Let me say that I always specified the inquiry I was making about any priest. I don't know whether one calls that limiting or not. It's against our church law for me to ask them, uh, do you have a reason to think that this guy could shoot the president or rob a bank? I have to respond to the information and complaint I have. Before you send them to St. Luke's and ask them the questions you did then, why do you need to sit down with Shelley and say, Father Shelley, we have concerns about the safety of our kids and we have a zero tolerance policy. Tell me everything that you have done either to kids as a priest, sexually, or whatever you have done to view kids uh, that constitutes child pornography, which in our view is sexual abuse. Did you ever ask him his sexual history concerning his compulsive interest in youth? I'm confused here. Is there some allegation I'm not aware of that Father Shelley ever abused a child? Well, we'll get to what we do know and what we to reflect. My question is, did you ask him, have you ever abused a kid? I don't believe I ever asked him that. Did you ask him if he had downloaded child pornography? I don't recall asking him that. I may have. The record would show that if I did. Well, sure, you'd record that. Right. And if he had admitted it to you, that would constitute? Call the police. Call the police. I would, and, I would have called the police. And you didn't call the police. Right. So? I had no reason to suspect that he had child pornography. So you didn't ask? That's right. 